it's Around Town with Mandy. And being a new year, I thought what better way to start off with a fantastic show. So I've brought my dear friend, Miss Evelyn Berry, to the show to give a little behind the scenes of Centerville and learn just a little bit about what it's like to live in Centerville at 102. Miss Evelyn, how are you? I am slow as Moses. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all right. We are glad to have you. So, we'll start off. You just had a birthday. Yes. 102. That's amazing. I um, think it's pretty amazing myself. Definitely. So, what an accomplishment. So, we were just talking. You've been in Centerville since you were two years old. Right. Um, your parents, you, they moved here when you were two. Um, you've seen everything in Centerville. So tell us a little bit about Centerville, some of the things that you've done growing up and seen and how it's changed. Well, I'll tell you uh, how the Heights has changed. Okay. The Heights was the first development that Centerville had. And uh, it was just like living in a big family. Uh-huh. And I called all the children in the Heights my Heights kids. And I loved every one of them, and there were about 22 of them. Wow. And they were all about the same age. Uh-huh. And uh, Johnny Clark was one of them. He became a judge and ended up, he had, all, uh, he had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and uh, he ended up in the nursing home. Uh, and I happened to be volunteering there at the time. And uh, I went over to him one day and I said, Johnny, I know you're a judge, but you're still my Heights kid. Yes. <laughs> and he had a brother, Bill, and a sister, Carol. Carol was my oldest daughter's best friend. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, but they were... Where I live today, I've lived there 74 years, mm -hmm. and that was about the first house on the Heights. Wow. Mr. Trip Callahan had that house built. Mr. Conley Gannon built the house, and uh, uh, when I was in the hospital with my second child, we lived in the third floor apartment in the big brick, what they called the Bright House, uh, right alongside of the uh, Board of Education. Okay. Tiny little third floor apartment. And my husband came to the hospital and he said, guess what we're going to do? And I said, I don't know. He said, we're going to buy a house. And he said, we've got to get out of that third floor apartment. Yeah. And uh, so uh, uh, Trip Callahan and his wife decided they did not want to move in town, so they put the house up for sale. And uh, so that's how we got... You got your house. My ha our house. And my husband, I have lived alone 42 years, and my husband was 59 when he died. Wow and uh, died of his, his second his fatal heart attack. Uh -huh. And Your uh, husband worked in the Postal Service, correct? Beg your pardon? Where did your husband work in Centerville? Uh, right in the post office. Okay. Uh -huh. You were telling me, what was his position when he retired? When he retired, he was supervisor. Supervisor of the post office. Uh-huh. And uh, Bill Rowe was, was uh, uh, postmaster. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barney Willis from Chestertown was postmaster after Bill left. Uh -huh. And uh, I used to have the sweetest neighbors. My best friend, uh, Bill and Bessie Anthony, he was the most decorated uh, veteran in Queen Anne's County. Is that right? <laughs> and uh, they moved next door and then... Uh, I think it was Lester Downs that moved right across the street from okay. me. And 
th those friends were wonderful. They were over there about once a week checking on me. Oh, so that's nice. So he looked out for nobody you. Nobody asked him to do that. Yeah. And uh, every once in a while, I'll give him a little gift. Nice. And uh, so... Uh, so in Centerville, you've worked many places in Centerville. Oh, my goodness. You've, you've... It sounds like I couldn't keep a job. Oh, no. I've worked so many <laughs> places. Uh, would you like to hear... So what are a couple where, that you've done? I know one or two that you've done. Uh, share some well, the... the first place I worked was Goldstein's Five to Dollar Store. Uh-huh, which was downtown. That was across what Edwards Pharmacy is, was across the street from that. Okay. Making 25 cents on a Saturday night. Wow. Then I worked at the Record Observer, uh, Mr. Leon A. Andrus uh, owned that na then. Scotty Wilson worked there. I loved Scotty. I was a proofreader. Uh-huh. And Scotty, when the world started, World War II started, Scotty joined the CIA. He went, ended up in Germany, and somebody pushed him down three flights of steps, and he died instantly. Oh, no. Yeah. And, uh, and then I worked for Wilson Feed Company. Okay. Merrick Wilson owned the feed company. I worked there until a fellow from New York, a Robert Mance, bought it. And uh, after he bought it, several, well, a couple years, I guess, after uh, Mr. Mance bought it, uh, it caught fire. And then I worked for Willis and Cecil. Uh, McKinney Willis and Charlie Cecil owned it, uh -huh. uh, the feed mill on the railroad tracks right close to Tillman Terrace. Okay. Of course, Tillman Terrace wasn't there then. Right. And then my first pregnancy, I quit uh, at that feed mill. Oh, oh uh, I guess I was seven or eight months pregnant. And uh, Charlie Cecil took me home and uh, hugged me and told me he'd be he'd be missing me and I missed him too but uh, and then after that uh, I stayed home with the two girls until they went to school and then I uh, went to work for they called it Ma Bell Bell Telephone okay yep Ma Bell and I was a telephone operator and, uh, oh, I could tell you many stories about <laughs> being a telephone You could tell us a lot about Centerville and a telephone <laughs> operator, and, I bet. Uh, and every full moon, this couple out at Roosburg would have a fight. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> and they'd call in to the telephone office. They'd say, send the, send the officer, send the sheriff, they'd tell us. Every full moon. Every full moon. You knew it was coming. And we'd look at and say, uh-oh, full moon tonight. <laughs> and uh, then after I worked there as a telephone operator, uh, well, I have to tell you one episode. I won't use names. Okay. Uh, but this man called in one day. He was, when you flip the, the phone, the light would flip on the on the switchboard. Okay. And I went in there, I jammed the uh, cord in there, and I said, yes. He said, when are you going to answer me? I said, when it's your turn. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I've got about a dozen lights here to answer, but when your turn comes, I'll surely Answer right, wait you. your turn. So then when I finished working there, I uh, was in the church choir. Well, in fact, I was in church choir for 30 years. Wow. And uh, so Mary Ann Edwards, I will use her name, uh -huh. uh, uh, came to choir 
practice one that night and she said, are you ready to go to work again? I said, why? She said, because my husband who owns Edwards Pharmacy and is a pharmacist there, would like for you to come to work with us. Uh -huh. Well, make a long story short, I worked there 25 years and best boss I ever had. He was more like a brother. Uh -huh. He And he, I'll say, he was like an angel without wings. There you go. And, uh, but, uh, that was the last job I had. And then I retired. And one day I went in the post office and uh, Ronnie Edwards asked me to come back to work. I won't tell you why I quit working there because that's not a very nice story. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyway, Ronnie said, are you ready to come back to work? And I said, no, I'm used to staying home now. And uh, so that was my last job. That was your last for, job at the pharmacy? At, working at the pharmacy. And somebody said, well, what did you do at the pharmacy? I said, I did everything but fill prescriptions. That's right. And, Many hats. And, <laughs> but uh, that was the story of my, all my employment. So you've seen a lot in Centerville. Oh my, did I ever. So what's something, being 102 in Centerville, something that you could tell our viewers or a secret to keep your health in such good health? You have a very routine. We were talking about your routine. Well, that's what my doctor asked me. Uh-huh. My doctor was in Chester Town, and he asked me one day, what do you, I was about 80 years old. Okay. And I think, uh, I was young then, right. 80 years old, and he said, what do you attribute your old age to? I said, healthy food and exercise. I walked a lot. You did, and you swim. Yeah, I swim. I hope I'm able to swim this summer, but I go out to the pool from three to five, and I exercise in the pool mm -hmm. by walking and swimming. I can't do too much swimming now. But you walk the pool. But I, I uh, stay in the pool about 45 minutes or an hour, and then I get out and sit alongside the pool and read. Read your book. And uh, I go in at 5 o'clock, and by that way, my sister across the street knows if I'm still living. Yes. <laughs> when I put the umbrella down, you and know. And she knows you're safe and inside. I'm going in the house. And she told me one time, she said, you know, you shouldn't be out there swimming alone. I said, you know something? I've heard that story ever since I was five years old. <laughs> <laughs> And so every, you have a routine, you still drive. Yes. And you drive to the market. Yes. Every Tuesday. Yes. So, and you had a special treat on the Tuesday of your birthday. Oh my gracious, I had a big surprise. One of my good friends in there came over and she's friends with my granddaughter. And she said to me, Mrs. Berry, I think you'll soon be having a birthday. Uh -huh. And I whispered to her, I said, yeah, it's today. And when I got up to the checkout counter, the whole group of them was singing birth happy birthday oh, to that's me. that's great. Gave me two balloons. And uh, while they were singing happy birthday, I directed them. There you go. <laughs> and uh, so then when I got ready to check out, they wouldn't let me pay for my groceries and gave me a card that said customer of the month. Oh, nice. Yeah, but wasn't that nice? That was now, nice. Now that's a good commercial for the Acme market. <laughs> that's a small town, we were talking. That's a small town for you. You exactly. don't get that, you know, anywhere else. Exactly. That's, people right. know you by first name. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, I appreciate you coming in. 
And with you got to meet the crew. Most of us are younger. Do you have any knowledge to tell us to look forward to being in such great health at your age for us to, to learn? To well, the same thing I told my do doctor, healthy food and plenty of exercise. You know what Tom Brady says, your life depends on your exercise your quality of life. Right. Quality of life depends on exercise. And I'm so disappointed now because I can't walk. I, I can walk, you know, to take you care tired, of myself. Yeah. But as far as walking for exercise, I'm afraid to do it because I'm afraid of falling. Yeah. And uh, don't want to do that. No, we don't want that. Well, I appreciate you stopping in. I'm so glad you got to come and be on my show. I've been looking forward to meeting and talking, so I'm glad we got to celebrate after your birthday. Well, um, and I appreciate, you know, your kindness, and uh, you do a great job. You're a busy gal. <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I, I, I like to stay busy, that's yeah. for sure. And you stay out of trouble yes, when you're that, busy. Yes, definitely. And you don't want to get in trouble. No, it doesn't get us anywhere. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and I look forward, hopefully we'll celebrate many birthdays. Oh, honey, don't wish that on me. No? 